Welcome to another edition of your Christian News Connection, and I've been waiting for this. I really have. It is so blessed. He is my mentor. I don't know if you realize that. Pastor Barry Carter joins us. You are. Well, you are you, a good friend, and thank you for taking me under your wing and mentoring me and uh, walking welcome. me through it's some been my things. My pleasure, Jim. Uh, my pleasure. We're gonna. Things are going crazy. Yeah. In the last year. Yeah. And you know, we, Pastor B joins us every Wednesday on the air at eight oh five, and we uh, have a little thing called prayer time. We we, we do uh, everything with. Um, we don't even. Uh, we don't plan it. We just yeah, yeah. Uh, let God's word let let God take care of this, and and that's it. Yeah. And this is what we're doing in the next uh, part. One is to, uh, this Sunday, uh, this weekend. Mm-hmm. And then part two will be the following weekend. Second Timothy, which we uh, talked about this and prayed about. So yeah. st- the scripture verse that you started to read and talk about. Just give us a few uh, verses. Well, we've had uh, just to back up a little bit in America, and you know, America is a, is a country in the world. The world is a lot bigger than America. Uh, We've had a lot of controversy. We've had a lot of uh, difficult things happen over the last four years. It all started, Jim, and uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to talk a little bit and talk about where, where we're at, where we came from. We knew in uh, 2016 when that election took place that um, there was a lot of angry people. There was a lot of people who were distraught. Uh, They thought Hillary Clinton, and I'm not, I'm not, uh, Voicing my opinion on anything, I'm just historically looking at something exactly, right now. Exactly. Yes. And uh, the people were very angry. They felt like the election was stolen. And from the very time that uh, Trump got in, um, it's very evident to me, in my personal opinion, that the onslaught he has been onslaughted from the very start. Um, I personally think, and I'm speaking from a personal standpoint, and we're going to read some scripture here. But um, Trump came out with a slogan that I thought was incredible: "America First. And that doesn't mean that we don't care about other nations. That don't mean that we don't fight for freedom in other nations. Um, and I'll be the first to say that Donald Trump is not a perfect man. Uh, if you look historically through American history, many of our presidents had shortcomings, yeah. uh, immorality in their mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know that, um, and I'm not going to name names, but several presidents uh, cussed mm-hmm. uh, pretty, yeah. pretty much in office. Mm-hmm. And uh, so this isn't anything new. I think the new thing is, is that we have a news cycle now that repeats things every half hour. If you watch a news program, Jim, yeah. <laughs> you watch the next one, and they're saying the same thing, same, only yeah. shuffling the cards right, a little bit. Right, right. And uh, I've been on radio uh, for a few years, and Jim, you've been on the radio, and I was on uh, a, um, a radio station, and it's all about the story. Yeah. If you're going to make a radio station go, you have to continue to tell the story. Right. And you start to switch it and change it. Mm-hmm. So for the last four years, we have seen animosity. We have seen division. We have seen a nation, um, in a large part, not come behind the president. Mm-hmm. Now, you look at that from a biblical standpoint. It says those who are in authority. We're supposed to pray for them. Right, exactly. We're supposed to honor them. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, that's what we're supposed to do. Uh, at the same time, there has been a animosity, a friction. Um, in the Bible, talks about one who's coming in Antichrist, where there be a one-world religion, a one-world government. And Donald Trump's approach uh, to entering in the political world, he was not a politician. We know that. He was a businessman. And his motto was, make America great again. And... Um, The evangelicals uh, joined in that. They saw the value in that. And um, most of what we saw, uh, what he said that he was going to do, he accomplished. So how does that enter in? What do we do with that? Believers. I know that um, I've talked to many evangelicals, many Christians who voted for Biden. Some voted for Trump. Uh, Many voted for Trump. And there's an animosity. There's still an anger. And you say, well, what is that? Where is that coming from? What's the origin of that? And we have to go back to Scripture. We have to go back to yeah. the Word of God. And let me say there's been, there's been um, three dominant things that have taken place in America, to my best recollection. Uh, number one, we did away with prayer in the schools. We took God out of our schools. When I was in school, we did the Pledge of Allegiance, and there was a prayer that was spoken in the schools. And you say, well, that's not a big deal. Yes, it is. Because what you're setting is a president from the very beginning, when p- kids are in school, as Americans, they realize they pledge allegiance to the flag. Mm-hmm. And they say one nation under God. And then the next thing that took place, um, uh, one of the next things that took place is we did away with, uh, well, 
abortion. Huge decision. 60, now when I say this, Jim, every time I say this, I'm taken back. 60 million babies aborted in America. 60, not in the world, 60 million babies aborted in America. And now we've moved to aborting babies outside of the womb. When I think about the Civil War, I go back to the Civil War, I think about civil rights. The reason we fought the Civil War was to free the African Americans who were brought here in slavery, that they had every right that we did. And Abraham Lincoln was the, what I want to say, the forger into that. People hated him. Uh, There was several uh, assassination attempts on his life. And, um, and through the Civil War, over a half a million men died in America to free the slaves. And I look at that and I say, is the conflict now over uh, abortion? Well, how does God view that? So you take the first one was they take prayer out of schools. You take the second one, the ruling on abortion. And then the third one, the recent one uh, not long ago that was, uh, went through the Supreme Court, that marriage is no longer between a man and a woman. Now, you say, what's the big deal with that? You know, the Supreme Court ruled on that. Well, there, I don't care what the Supreme Court rules on. If it doesn't line up with the Word of God, Jim, mm-hmm. it's not valid. And if you remember correctly, the, the rainbow was um, projected onto the White House after that uh, ruling came down. Uh, now, I'm not, uh, against, I'm not saying I'm against uh, Barack Obama. I'm, I'm, not talking, I'm not talking political parties here. I'm talking yeah. about God's agenda. Right. So you say, well, where does that lead us to? Well, when Jim and I was talking here when we first came in, we went to 2 Timothy 3, and Paul told Timothy that in the last of the last days, this is what's going to happen. And then we're going to read that to give you a good description on what it's going to be like. Mm-hmm. And when you read this, it's almost going to be like a newspaper. And I don't know what translation you have there, Jim, because I might read it and let you read it. All right. Because it, it really is like reading the newspaper today. Right. It is. And then Paul told Timothy, through this situation, through these last day experiences, here's what you do. So listen, as you as believers who are listening on the radio right now, we're going to give you a description of what the Apostle Paul told Timothy to do. And, um, Go ahead. And why I, don't you read it? Yeah. Me. Okay. It says, but know this, that in the last days perilous... And I'm going to add some things because I have an amplified Bible at home and I read it many times. But know this, in the last days, perilous, difficult, stressful times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. They will be boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power from such people turn away. Now, even that today, Jim, in my personal opinion, that's not a political right thing to say, but this is what the Word of God says. Mm -hmm. So in my view, the Word of God trumps, (laughs) I don't mean to say Trump in the term of President Trump, but it trumps every other mm-hmm. thing in the world because Jesus is a King of kings and Lord of lords. Mm-hmm. His kingdom reigns over the earth. So, Jim, what is yours? Uh, My, mine is basically but the same thing, but he says, Mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days, yeah. and people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful and proud. And But it says, have nothing. The right that, that says, have nothing to do with them. Yeah. So, yeah. what... How do we hand, uh, this is how do we handle it? Just say okay, you know. Do we say you know, get away from me, or we just say no? What do we? I, that's right. Well, wh- I, I get angry. I shouldn't get angry. We have nothing to do with them. No, no. the 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 point is, in yeah. fact, uh, what we're reading today out of Romans uh, twelve, it says, "Do good to those right. who who okay. uh, persecute you." And it puts hot coals upon their head. What does that bring? Conviction to their yeah, life. Right, right. Now, okay. nice. if they don't yeah. yield that conviction, then that's up to them. But we have to show the love of Christ. We have to preach the gospel, not our opinions. That's one of the problems we get in today. Listen, I'm not here to be a politician. I'm a, I'm a minister of the gospel. So right. what I do is I give you the thoughts of God. Right. Here is what's on God's mind. Here's right. God's agenda for the church today. And I think sometimes we have even switched that, Jim, where we believe if we elect the right person, then he'll do what the church is supposed to do. Mm-hmm. That's not the reason we put somebody into office in America is so we can live a quiet, 
peaceable life mm-hmm. so that we can preach the gospel and mm-hmm. extend his kingdom. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point of this. Yeah. So then he tells, uh, then he tells Timothy in verse 10 of uh, 2 Timothy 3, but you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, mm-hmm. purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, and perseverance, persecution and affliction, which happened to me in Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, what persecution I endured, and out of them all the Lord deliver me. And yes, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, mm-hmm. but evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now listen to verse 14 yeah. in 2 Timothy 3. But you must continue. I'll read that again. Yeah. You must continue. Mm-hmm. Listen, in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, that from your childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All Scripture, now many of us know this, yes. but not in the context here. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. If there's anything we need today, Jim, it's instruction and in righteousness, mm-hmm. right living. And it says that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every yeah. Good work. Yeah. And I mean, then you could go to the next verse, chapter 4. It says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. I mean, you could just keep it reading is, on and on, Jeff, because it's, it's all truth. It just is yes. unveiling where we're at today. When, when we hear these things, when we read these things, we see what's going on in the world today, and we get frustrated. Yes, we get angry. And how do we, how do we not cope with it, but what do we do? Just continue to pray. That's Yeah, and when we say yeah. that, I think some people say, well, you know, uh, what we do to do is pray. Well, I'm not talking about a five-minute prayer, just a prayer you lift up to God yeah. to help our nation. You know, there's there's— Prayer without ceasing. There's intercessory right, prayer right. where we travail in prayer. You know, Daniel oh. um, Daniel, Daniel was, was praying. He was a righteous man. And the angel said it took him 21 days to get Daniel's answer to prayer. And he said, I had to have the archangel, Michael, help right. me break through. Now, what do you call that? That's spiritual warfare. That means yeah. Darkness and light was in a battle for 21 days. And as Christians in America, we pray one day. And, Jim, we're expecting our the answer to our prayer. Sometimes no. we have to travail yeah. in it and continue to call on God, believe yeah. God, yeah. and uh, trust Him completely. It's, like, it's persevering. It's persevering. Persevering and to say, okay, Lord, it's in your hands. We like, Again, we can't do it one time. We have to continue to pray and, right. sp- and spend that Spend that time with God, wherever you are, right. whatever you're doing. That's what that's what right. I get out of it. But uh, we're going to continue uh, with the, the Christian News Connection. Again, we're going to go. This is part one, and Pastor B will be with us uh, the following weekend with part two. Thanks for joining us today on Christian News Connection here on the Lights 95.9.